Hello, and welcome to the show. My name is Mike, and joining me on this fine evening is my son, Dom. And we'll be exploring the fabric of space-time as we discuss today's topic, Quantum Break. Quantum Break is an action-adventure game made by Remedy, Remedy Entertainment in 2016 that me and my dad played on Xbox for in, uh, using Game Pass. It's currently available for $10. So, before we get this um, review underway, let's set the scene by going over the story just a little bit. Where did it all begin? So, your character, Jack Joyce, is call called in by your friend Paul to see his this big project he set up at the university lab. And it's a time machine from which he... in which he goes in uh, and once he's in it, your brother... Will shows up and points a gun at you and says, this is bad. And then from there, everything gets interesting. Interesting how so? What what happens after Paul travels through the time machine? Once Paul, Paul goes in the time machine, another Paul comes out. A uh, different Paul dressed in all black to show evil. So, that's not the best. <laughs> Actually, that, that that that's not how it happened. Is that not? No. He he goes in and then the the Paul comes out, right? Yeah, but when he said it for the first time, it was only five minutes into the future. Well, yeah. So when he comes back out, he's dressed the same. However, when you meet up with him shortly after that moment, then he's evil. Then he's dressed in black and his hair's grayed, and you're wondering why is he so different than he was just a minute ago. <laughs> Turns out he's lived a long time since that happened because the time machine <laughs> it done goofed. It done goofed. So shortly after Will arrives and the time machine sends Paul to God knows where at this point, we see that this group that we hadn't heard of before called Monolith. Monolith. Monarch. Yes, because it's got a butterfly logo. Monarch uh shows up and they're looking for you and they've got guns and many you need, guns you need to get out of there and fast so jack and will they make their escape and this is where the game play kicks in you learn that jack has certain powers now now what are some of these powers he can make a bubble he can basically throw a time bubble at you that when you're in it you just don't get to go forward in time he can time dash, which is essentially te teleportation, just short range. He can put a time bubble around himself. It's a shield. And uh, what else was there? There was time vision, which is basically spidey vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, that magic vision that lets you see through walls and know where enemies at. That isn't every game ever. Very useful, though. Don't, well, don't, yes. don't get us wrong. There's a reason it's everywhere. It is. So, after that resolves, you get to a point where you meet that older Paul, and uh, he's all dressed in black, like we said, and he kills your brother, and then you're left wondering what to do next. So, you escape and meet up with a mysterious woman. Uh, oh, Beth. At first, you don't know her, though, but she very much knows you. She she greets you with a gun. Great way to introduce yourself. And I know, right? The moment you look at her, she puts her gun down and goes, Oh, I didn't know it was you. Let's you go free. You point you then point your gun at her, say, Why are you helping me? She's essentially like, Don't worry about it. Then you go on. So after the first episode of this game, which is divided into five episodes, I do believe. Yes. You find out that you have to play a short segment as Paul, and during that segment, you get to make a choice that colors the rest of the next segment, segment as well as what makes this game so unique among many games yes. that has a live-action TV portion. So, for us, when we played through it the first time, we had the choice between um, killing the... Um, witness i think her name is ashley allison it was something with an a killing her 
and ending uh, up in like a, like the people turn against monarch type situation or using her to perform a PR campaign that would make monarch look better to the people in the community and not wanting to be the murderous types. We decided to go with the PR route, which meant that things were going to be a little bit harder for Jack, but that our uh, witness got to survive. Now, the cool thing about that is that she stayed with us for the majority of the rest of the game uh, and interacted with several parts of the game because we didn't have her killed. Yeah. I think it's very... Should I say... Yeah, I'll just say it now. The... I think it's very interesting how well balanced those decisions with Paul are. Because, for example, that decision was very, like... It was good and bad for both parties, Jack and Paul. So, right. like, you can't let her live, and you get the advantage of a PR campaign, but he gets the advantage of insider information later. Or killing her gets you the gets the people against you, but more specific parties, like, with you. And Jack never gets to have that insider information that yeah. she had. So the story unfolds from there, but let's let's move away from the story and talk a little bit about the the co-op experience. How did we play this game together? Well, I from what I remember from what I understand there's no actual co-op. I sat and watched you play it, but I will say it's an incredibly entertaining and easy game to watch. It it's one of those more story-based games and those games are good for the the couch watchers experience especially the tv portion because it's just tv (laughs) right so what did you think of the tv segments that were part of this game i think that they were amazing i like that it gave you the tv segments gave you more of a view on what was happening to the rest of the characters you knew as opposed to what was just happening with jack so we got to take the focus away from jack for a while to show you what's happening in the surrounding area yeah does does jack even appear in the he appears in like one episode after he like gets broken out of containment for something but mostly it revolves around charles who we hated because he's a jerk the the hacker guy yeah not a fan with the like old timey like (laughs) mustache Uh, and who else who did Uh, we like liam who was amazing because he by the way i don't know if liam's actor did his own stunts be in the tv portions his fight scenes were done amazingly and i loved watching them so a lot of people who are hearing us talk about these live tv segments might be wondering why we enjoyed having our gameplay broken up by them so how long were these tv segments uh, it was like a normal show, so it was like 30 to 45 minutes, it, sometimes it, an hour. It wasn't that long. It was only about 25 really? to 30 minutes each time. It, it kind of felt longer because more stuff happened in that time. Not that it was like a drag, but it was like they they do so much story-wise in those episodes that it, it almost feels longer. So do you have to watch the episodes? No, they they give you the option to skip it, don't they? They absolutely do. So if you like (laughs) those time powers we were talking about, uh, gunplay and fast-paced action, and you're not too clued into the story, you feel free to skip those segments, but they're there if you want them. I would say if it's your first time playing, definitely don't skip them because I think it adds so much to the experience, and I think it's such a creative thing. I haven't seen any game do that since. No, I haven't either. And this is 2016. And one of the the cool things that you can do is add what they call a ripple effect. So when you interact with certain things during the gameplay, you can see that happen in the TV show. And like it'll put a little prompt on screen that says this was the ripple that came into play. But presumably, if you hadn't interacted with that, that specific little bit wouldn't have been there and changed what happened in general. And it can vary from, like, you placed an object here and then a character in the show, like, picked it up and was like, oh, object. Or it can be, like, 
you opened a door, so the it, the or you cleared out enemies in this area. You didn't have to, so the the getting to the objective is easier for the TV characters. I don't know if that's a thing I noticed, but I I, I do think... remember that one of the things we saw was uh, an offhanded comment about a specific equation being solved. Yes, which Will did on uh, when he walked through their lab. All right, so into gameplay mechanics. So what, what's the the primary gameplay mechanic? Uh, it's a shoot. It's a third person shooter. Like first and foremost, like that's the what's it called? gameplay loop. It's a cover based third person shooter. So you start out with just a pistol. You get more guns as you go on. Different like variations and powers. Okay, so if you're talking about guns, what types of guns are available? You start out with normal pistol you have the options between like later on you get a burst fire pistol there's a heavy pistol closer to the beginning yeah but we didn't oh i who was playing it i didn't enjoy the alternative pistols i used just the regular pistol and this game uh doesn't have traditional melee combat so in exchange it gives you unlimited ammo for your pistol Uh, what else did you have to use you had your automatics like the smg Assault rifle. I don't know what it was actually called. I think it was tactical SMG, but I'm going to call it the space SMG because it looks like space. Okay. <laughs> there was... um. And there was one more category of weapons. There was shotgun, which is... The shotgun was really more like heavy weapons because there was a... There's shotgun, tactical shotgun, automatic shotgun, but also LMG, which mm-hmm. is... A, which light is, machine gun yeah which is an automatic but it's huge and packs a punch so it i would consider that class more like heavy weaponry right and then you could also get a sniper rifle in that same like yeah category so which i think is i almost feel like i shouldn't have put that there because it's all such close range combat it feels like they just felt like they were obligated to put it there Yeah, you don't get a whole lot of scenes where you can take people out from a distance. And when you do, they close in on you pretty quick. Yeah. So if that's the primary mechanic, what would you say is a secondary mechanic of the game? Uh, Like like secondary to the guns is the powers we talked about. So you have to... And I say this makes for some pretty cool looking, and I don't know about feeling, but I assumed it feel... Yeah. Feeling gameplay where you have to know what powers to use when so you can use your like time dash as a dodge later on you get like a time sprint where you everything goes slow-mo and you basically have the powers of the flash so you get to run up to someone push a button and punch him in the face in slow-mo which like how rad is that so it like freezes everybody around you and you can move but they can't i think i saw the one the ones that you got the most use out of are time sprint Time dash and time shield. Well, the cool thing about the shield, in addition to protecting you from projectiles, it also doubled as your way to heal. So it was an invaluable skill. Now, one of the skills that I wish had been more useful, uh, that just wasn't, was the ability to freeze the enemies. Now, that, that sounds fantastic in a shooter when you're, you know, dodging around and you have to move because they'll flank you. Uh, but they introduce, uh, this type of enemy that also has access to time powers through, um, a suit and like halfway through the game, that's almost every enemy you encounter has that. So, yeah, it's, it's a good early game ability, but like late game, it's practically useless, which I think is dumb. Yeah. It's not, it feels like a missed opportunity on that specific power. Uh, but the rest of them are pretty cool. Yeah, I would also say a, a secondary mechanic of the game is there was a lot of sections where everyone around you is frozen and all you have to do is get through an area. And so there's sections where like there's an object on the ground that you can reverse the time of that specific object. And so it's like somewhat of a pu- puzzle element. So there's some like... there were, And then we also had uh, platforming elements. You'd have yeah. to jump. And so minor platforming, minor puzzle solving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it never takes up too much time. You're pretty quickly back into the, the action with the, the gunplay. That, not, like, hard to solve. Like, some of them were hard to execute. But... Yeah. It, that, that was the thing. 
and sometimes it was just a matter of learning what was going to happen. So you'd have to do the uh, the age old trial and error, which everybody loves. <laughs> Not. <laughs> All right. So towards the end of the game, how did the the gameplay feel to watch for you? I think the closer to the end of the game you were, the but like it got so much cooler. You can see visually the differences between you and Jack. Like you got better at the game, but that also made it seem like. It was almost like a lore thing where it was like, well, Jack's made better use of his powers over this time. He has mastered it more. He understands it more. So, and like, that's why certain abilities get better. Certain abilities get like unlocked partway through. And so like, it it really feels like by the end of the game, like he's almost like a time wizard now. (laughs) Right? You know, Final Fantasy has time mages, but they're never nearly as cool as Jack was with his powers. (laughs) <laughs> now, one thing we neglected to mention is that the reason Jack has the powers is because he was yeah. there when the time machine went haywire. But that also means that the antagonist of the game, Paul who was yes, who is your best friend Paul, also has these powers. And he's got plans. What are these plans? His plans are essentially to... I mean, he... It's hard to say, because they're somewhat vague. At least I felt they were. Okay. But it's essentially like he would like to survive the end of the world because he saw it. Yeah, so as a result of enacting time travel, the the world as a whole has been put on a time limit. And if you can't solve the titular quantum break, then <laughs> um, the world ends. So you have to figure out how to stop it. Now, Paul has tried for 17 years, which is why he looks so aged, to prevent it, and it doesn't work. So he's calling with a plan B. And now that's where you're at, trying to figure out how to deal with his plan B, which which was what? Plan B was this thing called the countermeasure. Nope. That was the what we used to defeat plan B. Plan B was the lifeboat protocol. Yes, that's what it was. Which yeah, used so many, the like, names. which used the countermeasure to create um, a time frozen field that key people could live in, but that's not the plan that Jack and Will had, is it? It's not. And like, by the way, Jack is no scientist during any of this, so I find that extremely humorous. That he's like, I gotta outsmart this guy. Me- meanwhile, Paul has like more life experience in general. And definitely more science experience. Jack's just a dude with a leather jacket and a gun. Not to mention the full power of Monarch behind him. Yeah. He's definitely the underdog story. The Jack's plan is to just kind of full-on stop it. Like, just full-on cease the end of the world. I could phrase that better. <laughs> He's trying to undo the end of the world. <laughs> Right, right. Okay, so before we get too much further into the story, let's shift gears and talk about the graphics. What did you make of the character designs? I think all of the character designs were really... Well, it's not as much character design as it is, like, they were really good at recreating the actors that are in the show. Like, they look exactly like them. And I'm sure that's pretty, like, standard now. Like, it's pretty easy to just, like... Plop. God, what's the guy from Death Stranding? Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. Like, you can just throw him in a PS4. But... I'm sure that would be painful. (laughs) Maybe they could use motion capture instead. Well, that's the alternative way. My way is cheaper. (laughs) (laughs) But you Uh, don't get him to all the PS4s. That's the problem. Not just mine. (laughs) But yeah, it was so spot on. And furthermore, the lip sync... Like, the animation of the mouths is so well done. It looks very realistic. I would say that it's... Everyone says, like, L.A. Noir has such good, like, face stuff. And I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying, like, this is close to being on par with that. And it doesn't do much for, like, the top half of the face. But, like, the mouth specifically feels incredibly accurate. Yeah, I I mean... 
all the animations were really good. I don't remember how, how anything sticking out as being like painfully animated. Yeah. Um, there were times where we questioned whether or not the game was crashing because they had these random freezes, yeah. which is the the way the game's supposed to be, but you're never quite sure. And it's well, I think that that's a cool thing that it makes you think that because at that point, like you're questioning the reality of it just as much as Jack is. Right, which is a really cool effect. Yeah. So, what did you think of the overall animations, Mr. Artist? <laughs> I think they did really good with making it look real while also giving it, like, that super hero effect. Like, when you time sprint up to someone and you do the, like, you punch them, they give real weight to that. They slow down the time, like, just before the punch and speed it up as the punch hits, which makes it look so much more impactful. Yeah, it always looks really good. I, I, I'm not as technical with it as he is, but, uh, yeah, it always looked really good. And they always had really good, like, graphics surrounding the area for whenever time froze or anything. Because there would be, like, everything would go gray, but there would still be, like, blue. You basically had, like, dog vision when time froze. <laughs> there would be, like, blue... And, like, little triangles would kind of rise up from the ground just as, like, a fun graphic. But it still made it feel cool and almost, like, cold. So one of the things that I had neglected to mention is that in the employ of Paul and his crew, he has this um, these machines that can emit a field that prevents time manipulation. Which is everything Jack does. Right. So then you're relegated to using just your, your guns to get through the situation until you can turn off the machine. Which, I, I didn't really like those sections. Like, narratively it made sense, but from a gameplay perspective, it really made you feel vulnerable. But since we're in the graphics portion here, what did that look like in comparison to everything else? That definitely looked like... That that looked a lot more like I said it looked cold whenever the time froze. Those areas looked even more cold. Like it looked dead in there. It looks like a dead zone. It's crazy. But and like everything has this like really cool like geometric uh art style about it, which I think is really neat. Like Monarch's logo too. Like it's got this like geometric design. And I think it's cool that they went with that because it fits the whole theme of like this sciency environment. Right. So we've kind of touched on it already, but how about the general backgrounds and environments of the game? What did we make of those? I would say that they were really good, but a lot of them did feel dead outside of like the time freeze. Like time would be completely fine, and yet it felt like you were like almost in like an abandoned neighborhood when you very much aren't. This game takes place in a pretty densely populated city okay so i think there could be a little bit more life in these places but at the same time like you're kind of you're hiding for most of the game so like you would go in these like more like back alley places where no one wants to go so narratively it makes sense but you feel like it visually <laughs> it gives a little bit of something to be desired otherwise it's really good all of the textures are really detailed and they did really good with all of it can you, can you remember any specific screenshot-worthy moments? There was a lot. There was, um... What was it? We were, like, at the top of, like, a skyscraper. Not, like, a skyscraper. Like, a building. And you, like, looked... You turned your camera, and, like... the vis It was, like, the city skyline with the sunset behind it. And it sounds like a kind of, like, cheesy, like... Wow, that's a beautiful thing to see. But, like, it was so well done. Like, the back cities were just silhouettes, and the closer to you it was, the more you, like, detail in it you could see. Which is, a lot of times they'll just make them all silhouettes, for the sake of... Simplicity? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with, like, the... that it didn't look lived in. I feel like Remedy did a fantastic job of making these, you know, reasonably realistic-looking areas... Like, um, when you're trying to break into the pool, uh, the pool hall, yeah. not pool hall, like the swimming pool area, uh, you had to go around and find the dumpster to pull out to climb up and it made it, it was in a place that made sense for a dumpster to be. Yeah. And, and everything was really well 
uh, like you said, textured. Yeah. So let's shift over to sound design. Was there any standout music in the game? Yeah, the music, I think, also reacted really cool with the time freeze because it, it did, like, it sounded like it was dubstep about to drop the bass, but it didn't. It did quite the opposite. It would be like the music would be going, and then you just hear, boo 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 and it would just kind of stop, and the music would go all, like, soft piano-y and, like, almost creepy. It does make it... The game does make it a point to, like, make the time freezes, uh, or, like, time skips, I think they call it. Yeah. <laughs> time hiccups. Uh, like, they do a good job of making it feel like an almost scary, like, event to be in. Which, realistically, it would be. Right? And one of the, the cool things about the game from a visual standpoint is the further along you get in the game, the more of these, these time skips, time breaks that you run into and the more like crazy animations that happen. Like you'll see things that just get stuck in this loop where they're falling and going back up and falling and going back up. Yeah. And you have to, well, that's where the, the platforming puzzle solving comes into play. Now that's one of the power we didn't mention, uh, clearly is that jack can reverse the time in a specific location to yes. like re-raise a platform yeah and and use that held in briefly where it is before it falls again yeah so you can like run across it and get to your get to your destination so what do you make of the voice acting i think the voice acting was all really well done I, like obviously uh it was more than just voice acting so there was also real acting. All everyone in the game who was a voice, they looked like their characters and they also did like physical acting as well as the voice acting. And I would say that was all really well done too. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh none of the voices came out as cringy. Uh everybody, you know, made sense in their roles. You know, sometimes you'll you'll play a game and you just you can't I was like, Oh god, just <laughs> just stop talking. But I, I never had that with this game in fact uh one of the characters what was his name paul's right hand man um i know i know who you're talking about he had an he has an incredibly like satisfying voice it almost sounds like uh agent 47 in hitman like it's that type of uh lance reddick nope that that's the actor Uh um the character is martin hatch I, I knew his name had an object in it. Martin Hatch. But, like, if you play the game, his voice is so, like... It's smooth and calming in a way, but it's also, like, you can tell he could kill you. And probably would. Oh, yeah. He's a jerk. Uh, well, he's just this intimidating presence when he's there. Yeah. He's super tall in the game, too. He's, like, probably the tallest character in it. Uh, Liam's pretty tall, too, but, like, even he kind of, like feels short next to uh hatch uh i don't remember them having a scene together but maybe well yeah they did uh but i won't go into that right so anything extra that stood out to you in the game i mean again i want to state like i think it's so impress so impressive and creative that they managed to mix like filming physically and like making this tv show and a video game like they were they managed to intertwine them so well and make them flow so well together and it's just so creative and i'm so surprised that no one has done that before because i saw it we were i was watching dad play this and i was like when did this come out and he's like 2016 and i was like i'm surprised i haven't seen like a thousand games like this since then because that's the kind of thing you would think like someone would see and they'd be like oh why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I don't know if it was very well received by the general community. I, I that's strange to me. Yeah, I liked it, but I don't know. I guess not everybody wants to stop playing. Well, like we said, you can skip it if you don't want to get the extra story. But... Well, and it doesn't take a lot away from you. It just takes away like what's happening with other people. But if you're like, well, I'm Jack, so I just want to know what's happening with Jack. You can just see that. Right. So. And in this extra bits portion, uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is 
um, they had all these references to their previous games. Uh, oh, yeah. Specifically, Alan Wake. Uh, Dom caught the first one that we saw in yeah. one of the TV episodes. They had uh, one of Alan Wake's books um, sitting next to the TV, uh, yeah. next to a TV. And then another one I saw later on had a, a TV playing the same shows that they played in Alan Wake. Um, this show's called Night Springs, and it's just this really strange <laughs> off the wall show. It's, it's basically Twilight Zone. Yeah. And, but it was so cool to see them call back to that. Well, and there was also the thing where there's a movie playing, and some guy's like, I can save them, and then it cuts to a guy holding the clicker. Right. No, it, yeah, that was the whole, like, here's a recap of Alan Wake. That that was yeah. actually even before we saw the book. That was, like, before we even got to the time machine. Yeah, but I don't think we caught that our first time through. I think it was... Something happened. And then we had to play the first part again, and then we saw it. Yeah, that's that's what that was, but that was really cool. And I tried to pause, like get the 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 screenshot right on the clicker so I could share that on on Twitter with you guys. But um, this was before I had my Series X, so I I didn't quite catch it. Had I had it, I probably could have just used the share button, which would have made it a lot easier. I I do almost wish we we held off on playing this until we had the Series X because I would imagine that game looks amazing. Well. Like, crazy we did switch and do the last chapter on the series x and it definitely had better load times yes and um everything seemed to run smoothly but it's not specifically enhanced for it yeah and seeing what remedy's doing with their current game control and charging an extra fee if they went back and revisited this game i'm sure they'd do the same which is disappointing yeah. When so many other games are embracing smart delivery or enhanced for PS5. Uh, sorry, I, I got to take a second here. Smart <laughs> delivery is such so much of a better way to describe it. It's simple and clean. I, I wish they would just use that on the PlayStation side too. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored, that's right. But, you know, this is an Xbox game. Yeah. It's uh, produced by Microsoft Studios. We can talk about Xbox doing things right. I mean, so many people talk about PlayStation doing things, right? I was just going to say, like, I feel like Xbox exclusives don't get nearly enough talk because, like, I've been playing uh, State of Decay, which is also an Xbox exclusive, and that game's amazing. All right. Well, that's another talk for another day. Yeah, but I was just going to say, like, I I'm just trying to say, like, I wish they got more talk. Yeah. Like, PlayStation exclusive, like, that's, those are, like, Marvel movies. Like, people freak out about those. Yep. Anyways, back on track. Uh, so just to recap everything, uh, what what would we say to, to recap this? Uh, God, that's a tough question. <laughs> Play it. <laughs> Play the game. So our, our final opinion on the game, um, it's a great game. The, the gameplay is fun. Most of the powers are really useful. It, it's unique uh for compared to anything i've ever played with the time powers tv show does a really good job of fleshing out characters yeah your final opinion uh again play it get it <laughs> it needs more love it genuinely does i'm surprised it's not one of those games that like people like freak out about so i just like to take a moment to restate if you're interested in taking our advice that you can pay, pick this up on xbox one or pc and uh when we checked it was running about ten dollars definitely worth it but it's also consistently available on game pass uh so it's worth checking out there the the one caveat is that it has a really really large file size and i'm pretty sure that's because of the tv show yeah. portions but it's over 100 gigabytes so if your hard drive can handle it or i guess your solid state drive uh give it a go it's definitely a fun game so you're not super active on the social medias, but if I'm somebody not. wanted to talk to you on the social medias, where could they find you? Uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Kruples on most things. K-R-O-O-P-L-E-S. Don't ask what that is. Like It's just a word I came up with and have been obsessed with. We were playing Super Smash Bros. Oh, was, that's where it came from. <laughs> he was playing King K. Rool. We're, it, it, anyways, it came from that. <laughs> I just called him Cruel for a while and then it evolved into cruples 
It's it's funny. Anyways, uh, I can be found on Twitter at Blaze Knight zero nine two three. Um, or here on the Backlog Buster show. Um, So thanks for taking this adventure with us, and we'll see you next time on the Busted Backlog.